Hello and welcome to The Darkness. I remember the night of my 21st birthday. That was the first time I died. It's the cattle! Oh, it's the cattle! Come on, wake up, sunshine! Oh, now up here, you boomba! Come on, look at me! construction site. Happily named. Classic mob venture filled with blue-collar construction workers armed to the teeth. And my boss, Uncle Paulie, 
Set me here to whack the foreman. Like I said, classic. So everything we just saw was an interactive cutscene that plays after we select New Game on this title screen. I thought it made a strong enough first impression that I made it the first thing we would see for this Let's Play. It's worth noting that the whole thing is very heavily scripted. The only required input is lifting Jackie's head at the very beginning. Everything after that plays out exactly the same whether or not you do anything, although you do get an achievement if you manage to kill all the construction workers. That's not the kind of extra content I'm interested in, so I didn't bother, though I will be showing off all the good bonus stuff. But anyway, enough about that shooting gallery tutorial. This is The Darkness, a 2007 first-person shooter based on a comic book series created by Mark Silvestri, David Wool, and Garth Ennis. That last one is a name that I've said many times in my Let's Play of The Punisher. Viewers of that LP will know that that means we are in for a lot of gore and death and murder. But first, we need to deal with the bloody aftermath of what we just went through. Oh, man. This sucks, Donkey Dick! The very first thing we have to do after our car crash is obey the on-screen prompt and check our journal. This is where we'll be getting all of our mission objectives. And it also provides us with a map, which tells us where we are in relation to New Jersey. So we can say, as bad as things are, at least we're not in Jersey. I grew up there, so I can say that. And I often do. After that, we can assess the damages. See what we can do. Oh god! It hurts! Seems like our driver is faring quite a bit worse than we are. Let's give him a hand. Jesus! I wouldn't want to do that again. Ah. Oh man, would you look at that? These pants cost me 400 bucks so at South. Now they got bloodstains all over them. <laughs> Some fucking 21st birthday for you, huh? Here. I got your present. Thanks, Mikey. Atta boy, Jackie. You look after those pieces and use them well. You know, this looks real bad. Real bad. Now go find out what's going on, and get the hell out of here. We're going to find out what's going on... from you. Mikey, who's this Sullivan guy? And what did he do to Paulie? Who gives a shit? He probably looked at him the wrong way. There ain't no free passes for Paulie. No matter what he did. Let's remember that. Where do I find Sullivan? He should be in his office. At the far end of the site. You be careful, though. This boy sure as hell know we're coming. How many guys he got on the site? Twenty, thirty tops. Some real hard asses from, from the Emerald Isle. Oh, is that all? Fuck this. Things have gone bad enough already. We're getting out of here. Hey, fuck it. Let's just go home, and we're gonna tell Polly we blew it. Are you crazy? <laughs> That's like asking a goddamn shark to share its dinner. We finished the hit. We just might make it out alive. Uh, okay, Jack. If you're alright now, let's go make that hit. Uh, uh, ah! 
doesn't look like Mikey is going to make it out alive. And our own chances aren't so hot either. We can appreciate his generosity though. Pretty nice birthday present. And it's going to allow us access to the rest of this level. Without him, we'd be stuck here. Right on the other side of this door, we are immediately distracted by a shiny piece of paper. That is our very first scrap of the ponderous amount of bonus content in this game. We'll be getting all of it, but we gotta survive first to enjoy it. Say, isn't 21 about the age that schizophrenia starts to develop? Uh, it's probably nothing. Just get some more ammo, and mention that a lot of this game consists of idle dialogue between NPCs. Sometimes, very long idle dialogue. They said I didn't have to pay it back, either. Jesus. <laughs> Joseph, would you relax? I was only making small talk. Cause I sure as hell ain't asking Paulie Franchetti. No, I mean, why do you need a loan? Chelsea goes off to college next year. I gotta get her out to the West Coast or something. Chelsea's your daughter? No, she's my girlfriend. Works out at the Cavern Club. Oh. Right. That's very generous of you. What can I say? She's a good kid. Plus, I gotta make sure she never runs in on my wife. Marie thinks I'm at art class on Tuesday nights. <laughs> yeah, that's a stroke of genius. You're the caring, nurturing paragon of virtue that we all aspire to. Where'd you learn words like that anyways? I bought some encyclopedias off some guy came to the front door one time. Oh yeah? How much? Well, <laughs> I didn't exactly pay for them. I caught him looking through the curtains at my wife. So I tapped him on the kneecaps with a hammer a couple of times and told him if I ever saw him around my neighborhood again, I'd stick a grenade up his ass. He seemed to lose his interest in the sale at that point. Wow. You're pretty generous yourself. I would have just wasted his ass. What? And get blood all over my nice new set of encyclopedias? That's everything the game thought we needed to know about these two mooks. Time to go introduce oh, ourselves. The instant we step around the corner, they know exactly where we are. So it's time to start blasting. They got us deep into the red there. Almost killed us. Jackie dies realistically quickly in a hail of gunfire. He also, in all that excitement, discarded his birthday presents. Jackie doesn't so much reload his pistols as replace them with whatever he happens to find. All the pistols do have slightly different properties, although they are functionally identical. Just a shame that Jackie isn't a little more sentimental. Soon. And whatever you say, voice in my head, I'm more interested in this here number, which is actually going to be surprisingly important a little later on. Here we get an important tutorial on a major mechanic of this game, something they put a lot of love into, executions. <laughs> By sneaking up unnoticed, we get a special behind the back execution. Don't let that make you think that stealth is an element of this game though. Enemies pretty much automatically know where you are. But you can still execute anyone within point-blank range. It's a mechanic that I loved in The Punisher, and I like it a lot here as well. Someone's gonna keep shouting at us, but they're never gonna find us for some reason. Meanwhile, we get to keep looking for phone numbers. There was 1206 again. Jerry's pawn shop is 555-9132. And the sex shop has a number that I can't quite make out from here. So I guess it's not important. I've had it up to here with this asshole! What is important is that we get back to murdering. Cause it's kill or be killed here. I mean, from Okinawa. And he needs to run the matches. He 
Bruce killed seven men so far. He must think he will see. He refusing to talk with his lawyer, the priest, anybody. Our next group of enemies are on break, watching some public domain television so loud that they can't even hear the gunshots outside. A fatal mistake. Things seem to just be getting worse. So that news report is actually a pretty clever way of letting you know that enemies are incoming if you recognize the area that they are filming. Then unfortunately the enemies do interrupt the news report, it's very hard to actually watch the whole thing. It also tells us that we gotta keep moving because the cops are coming. We don't have to move too fast. Leave that lift to go its own way while we do a little more exploring. Cause down this path is another one of those shiny pieces of paper that I like so much. And unfortunately, in just 10 minutes, we've missed 87 collectibles. This game is brutal. That or they are not numbered sequentially. Now that we've made that detour, we gotta call the elevator back. Ride it around again. Sometimes these collectibles are a bit inconvenient. Though it does give me a chance to show off that if we idle for a couple of seconds, Jackie will reload his guns. Instead of just throwing them away. Obviously that is not practical in the middle of a firefight to just stand there, but it's a means of keeping your guns if you like them so damn much. Game also taught us how to crouch back there, which is very important. This dipshit gives away his location and sticks his head out around the corner. Would be a great time to go for a headshot, but the execution is always more efficient and more satisfying. Another guy, eager to die. Couldn't execute him though. But usually when there's a single enemy, just charge him and go for that one button kill. Seemed to have hit a dead end. Guess it's more TV time. Hey, it's your Uncle Paulie. You know you've been a pain in my ass since the day I met you, Jackie. Pissing and moaning about the way I do business. Well, you need to learn who's calling the shots in this family. I've been very, very generous to you, Jackie. In fact, I got a surprise for you. On your birthday. It's in the closet. Have a blast. Huh, there also happens to be a trail of blood going to that very same closet. I don't think I'm gonna like this surprise. Well, he gave us 10 seconds to escape. That should be plenty. Me and Paulie never did agree about the way things were being done. Paulie took the business into selling drugs, working side by side with the cops. When I was growing up, the family had codes. We did business. We looked out for the people. I believe we ought to honor those codes. Now, Paulie, he's just a parasite. Wants to bleed me dry. Jackie, you're 21. You still are growing up. Actually, we're quite lucky to still be growing up after that bomb and the car crash, the construction site, and this new hit squad. We're gonna have to keep on killing. We found a brief moment of solace, though. 
Ice will fall. Once again, interrupted by the voice in our head, but I'm more concerned about shiny paper that I can't get to. Maybe later. Seems to, once again, only be one route to continue. A lot of graffiti out here in the cemetery. People come here in a bad mood, I guess. Hey, who's there? What are you doing? All he says we see him, we blow his brains out. There was one seemingly harmless voice mixed in with all the threats of murder. But we certainly don't have time to concern ourselves with that. We gotta get right to killing, because this is one of the hardest fights in the entire game. Not even kidding. This is right around where we find the darkness to be lacking in certain standard features of most first-person shooters. We can't peek around corners or really use cover in any efficient way. Just gotta sort of pop in and out. Well, the way Jackie dies so quickly, it's tough. And once you're in this bloody red screen, it takes a very long time to recover and it becomes very hard to defend yourself. But we're already in a cemetery. Good a place as any to die. Life is a lie we shall Sounds like someone or something disagrees. So rather than die, we're gonna get right back to killing. Try that encounter again. So I find it easiest to immediately cross the entire cemetery, hide behind this corner, because it's right where the enemies spawn in so you can get some quick executions before they can really start firing on you. You're also only defending yourself from one direction. If you're out in the open cemetery, they can come in from all sides, and they will split up. After they fan out, there's dozens of places for them to hide. They've got all the convenient pop-out features that we lack. So they can use their cover very efficiently. Bullets also have quite a bit of travel time. I don't know if it's realistic or what. I'm not much of a gun nerd. But it seems like... It takes a lot longer for bullets to land than I've ever experienced in any other shooter. We get a brief moment of invincibility during executions. But when you're like this, it's very easy to die right afterwards. With a bit of aggression, though, we have somehow managed to blast our way all the way through. Then we wipe the blood from our eyes and move on. Not very far, though. They parked us in. So while we go looking for a tow truck, let's, let's have a look around. That statue actually seems quite familiar. But now the only place we haven't checked is down here. It's a disgusting old abandoned bathroom where we can meet a foul-mouthed friend. Hey, don't shoot me, son. Frank Rottenberg's the name. I live here. It smells like Satan's bunghole. <laughs> but it beats freezing to death. Yeah, nice place. Angel statue and everything. Eh? What the hell are you talking about? You're in a piss parlor, kid. Yeah, unless you mean the Trinity Cemetery outside. Is there a way out of this fucking cemetery? There's a gate at the north end. Yeah, you got luck on it, though. Keeps out the undesirable element. So that's the only hot tip Frank's got for us. Shit. You look like a bomb hit you up the ass. I don't know. Seems like he should look a lot worse. And frankly, I don't appreciate that shit. Oh, Christ. Put that gun away, kid, before someone gets hurt. Ah, you've charmed me. Eh? Uh, hey. I like this guy. But it's a dead end. 
So let's get the hell out of here. He went in here. We got him! Never mind this. Got it, man. I will display my power. Oh, storage! Oh, I am in! He earned it. Through you, I am born. Looks like the voice in our head is finally out of our head. This is the darkness. It's gonna make up for that lack of options in the shooting I mentioned earlier. A lot of the controls are dedicated to making the darkness kill everybody. Not just kill them, but eat their corpses, which is something we're going to see a lot of. Pretty goddamn close. You always want to go around and clean up all the hearts you can. Even though the animations take a little while. Follow me, follow me to freedom. Another power of the darkness is the ability to summon little friends to help us out. Every man for himself! He's quick to go help us out, so he should watch his damn mouth when he says every man for himself. Especially because he is voiced by Richard Horvitz, the voice of Invader Zim. And a little bit of that voice goes a long way. I still love him though. He's done us a huge favor, and he's gonna do us another in just a second. Oh my god, it ain't real! He's out! He's out! <laughs> Immediately, rigor mortis, another threat. Then the darkness made him do some posthumous breakdancing. So we have our freedom, but we don't yet need it. Now is the time to go back and get that shiny paper we missed. This moment of backtracking provides a good opportunity for introductions to our new friend, the darkness. We saw it do a hell of a lot of shit after it erupted from our body. Killed everybody quite expediently. We only have access to one of the things it did. That thing is pretty convenient, though. We're gonna need a bit of darkness here. After we blast out this panel here, we can use what is called the Creeping Dark to control one of the heads. And then it can sneak through small passages and pick things up for us. This is perhaps the least of the darkness's abilities but we'll get the rest in due time. In the meantime, it's time to learn how lights work. In bright lights, its power will start to drain, as indicated by, ironically, the lights along the side of its head. Once it's down to that single light, it'll sink back into our body, and we can no longer summon it. Until we go back into darkness. Then we can manifest those heads again. They will consume the darkness itself to recharge its power. 
That sizzling sound means we are in too bright a light and our power is draining away. So we're going to have to shoot out the lights anytime we need to spend an extended period of time in one spot. Like right now. This garage here, slightly different from the other two. It's got a tiny little gap, which means we can sneak the darkness in once again and open the door from inside. And we can creep back around and check out Jackie in his praying pose. As he projects his own consciousness into the head of the darkness. All for another collectible. I think it might be time for more righteous murder. You're not getting me with your demon shit here. I have a feeling you're mistaken, friend. You need a key to get in shit for brains. Yeah, he's definitely gonna regret that. But first we gotta find a way in. Another Darkling summoning portal. Just as a little hint. Now I wanted to see what he was going to get up to, but he despawned as soon as I sent the head in there. That's fine. There are multiple ways to take care of business here. The Darkling did destroy a fan for us. Which allows us to destroy this asshole. Proving that in addition to its collectible gathering skills, the Creeping Dark actually has some killing capabilities. And it got us our key. Which will allow Jackie to head to one of his favorite places in the world, the New York City subway system. We'll get to gather our thoughts, chat with some friends, and harness the very evil that lurks in our soul next time. I've heard people complain that life is unpredictable. Well, I never had a life that was predictable. But what happened to me today? That's why I need you, Jenny. You're the only one I can count on.